to get it. And they want to run us through an oil and gas project finance model template uh, that I worked on. And uh, please note that uh, this is just a template and it's also to guide us when you can use it whenever you want to work on your own project, right? Uh, also, uh, the knowledge of oil and gas uh, is very, very uh, important uh, for you to be able to work with this template. You can always update it. It's very flexible. Uh, the formula also from uh, the formula applied in the model follow the financial modeling uh, fast or standard so let me uh, run us through this we have a table of contents and from here it's easy for us to navigate to other worksheets so from here i can for example i can click on a guide here and take you straight to the guide worksheets so the guide worksheet is very important uh, you have the project information what you are putting there is the project name uh, project location so this is for in nigeria oil and gas and uh, we also included the nigerian uh, applicable uh, tax law uh, in it uh, right and then you have the model navigation which is giving you the solution to everything you have in your model you have the input cells those kind of cells are cells that you can change and update you can see them uh, in this uh, specific uh, format right those ones that are results of templates those that are linked from another uh, worksheet, uh, the cell that just gives you a description uh, to what you have in your row. So this is just like a guide. And down here, uh, you have the mod, uh, the model naming range. So you can do some naming convention here. You can also uh, see them from here. And below, you have the model uh, audit check. So this is to check that everything is working perfectly in the model. And from there. Let's assume I want to go back to my table of contents. I have this content icon here that I can click. Let's take it back to my content. Here we have the summary uh, page. And on this summary page, we've also built in uh, what we call macro uh, because of circularity, right? Uh, we have to build some, um, we have to build macro for the model. Uh, we come back to this uh, model template. But from this model template, you can see you have different scenarios switch oil production, gas production, uh, oil price, gas price, uh, oil variable cost, uh, oil fixed cost, gas variable cost, and gas uh, fixed cost, right? You can always switch between each of these variable and only switch it. Uh, the model automatically uh, updates. So let me, take, let me put it back and to our base and our price. Let me just set everything back to the, okay. So we, by default, we set our price to be at the worst case. So if you want to change it to maybe uh, base price we also see the output of the uh, scenario here right so conservative $50 per barrel uh, high price $90 per barrel then just set it as your worst case to change the viability of the model uh, please also note that all the assumptions in this template they are just it's just assumption so whenever you want to work on your own projects you can always apply that now the next one is our assumption and here we have our input. So based on our financial modeling standard, the same. Whenever we build a model, all our inputs should always be in one single worksheet. And that's what we've done here. It means everything you need to update in the model, you just need to do it in your input worksheet. So here we have, uh, we've also built in some outline here so that the model just reads like a book. So you can see that we have almost like 12 sections. Uh, timing, feedbacks, funding, macroeconomic data, Oil production, gas production, oil pricing, gas pricing, your variable cost, fixed cost, uh, fiscal policy, right? You also built in uh, PIA in the model and then operating working capital. So, if you want to expand any other parts, you can it's easy for you to click here and you can see what you have under this section, right? So, instead of having multiple input worksheets, just have one uh, single worksheet and you can use your outline to make sure it looks good. So, let me open everything up and let's just have a Short run through. So we have a financial flows, basically uh, the figure where they are trying to uh, get the funding, right? Finalize, finalize all their documentation. Uh, that's more like what we consider as the financial flows. And you also have your assets valuation. You could use this to know value the, um, the, the, the assets, right? Maybe you want to acquire, maybe you want to uh, start or you just want to get your licensing, right? You can value the assets. So you have the construction period, right? So maybe you, after you've gotten your funding, how long would it take you to set up your plant and all those things? Then operational starts, operational starts, 
operational period right and your operational end period here are just general uh, data and also we have some, uh, combustion right you know based on the way oil and gas operates you need to do lots of combustion and that's what we have here in our model as i said uh, everything you have here they are just efficiency assumption and can always be updated and be, uh, the model will automatically update on its own here we have the kpx right so we view the model uh, yearly yeah, this is yearly um, model so construction uh, they, they said uh, how they plan to make use of the fund this perspective here for us right the assets lifespan right the oil uh, assets the gas assets and other uh, costs attached to it managing fee uh, legal fees or advice of fees or uh, defense fee right even there are some fee that might be funny which you need to pay yearly always put them under respective period as long as it is uh, under this our input cell range then incremental capex you can make provision for that you can compute this amount in the respective period then on the part of funding uh, uh, we have debt to equity right uh, equity 30 percent debt 70 percent you can always change this as well uh, based on uh, the project you are working on cost of funding we have the loan inflow period the expected loan period the moratorium period then you can also select your debt repayment type so we factor in two type of debt here we have the fixed annuity and also have the debt sculpting right so uh, debt sculpting is you just trying to structure your repayment based on your expected cash flow then if the interest will be capitalized during the construction period you select yes if not you select that means it will be expensed right and be added to the uh, amount needed on the project so we have the interest rates interest benchmark rates the interest margin to give us our interest rate then we also consider our debt reserve account which is the next to uh, at every time uh, we the, we need to always have an amount that will be equal to our next debt service in our reserve in our debt reserve account and the same thing we have here and we expect to fund our debt reserve account uh, 100 percent right so this is more like a, a, a coverage uh, to um, meeting up our debt obligation every time so debt reserve dsra is always required then the minimum debt reserve coverage expected on this project is 1.2 uh, times then we have provision for our cost of equity which is the profit sharing or dividend, dividend period we already stated the project finance for cash to go to the sponsor at that meeting or necessary obligation so we factor in some macroeconomic assumptions as i said these are just fictitious assumptions cost uh, inflation uh, we have a pricing cpi uh, interest on deposits right so uh, that's the fact that you have debt reserve accounts and then you need to gener start generating some interest income because the cash will not just be there you need to generate some interest on it then we have the discount rate uh, for oil and gas the, the discount rate usually fall within the range of 12 to 15 percent but if you prefer that you want to build your own work you can also build that and get your discount uh, rate then we have our oil production the expected oil reserve right the 2p reserves then just building some scenario so how you plan to um, do the production now always remember your production must always match with your reserve so you cannot say that you have a reserve of um, a particular reserve and your forecasted uh, production is exceeding your your reserve it really does not work like that when it comes to oil and gas right so we have that and in case there will be a provision for losses even if you're saying here you're going to produce this particular uh, barrier per annum right you also you can you want to make provision for losses which will affect your revenue you can always put the expected provision maybe 10 percent of what you forecasted production per annum five percent you can state that as well but for this model you set that as zero then the gas production you have the same thing you have your reserve your 2c right and the forecasted uh, forecasted production right so as i said it is also match with your reserve that you have and we've created different scenario uh, under it as well and also make provision for the oil pricing right we have our escal uh, escalation factor so here you can decide to select if you want the price to be constant for the forecast period or you want to factor in the incremental rate so you're saying hey so we sold for so for example if you look at the model now here everything just 
stay constant for the forecast period. But if I decide that, oh no, we want it to be incremental, as you can see, then the pricing factor would now be uh, applied on it, right? So from 65 to 66 to 67 to 68. But if you decide that, hey, no, let's even keep the price constant. So you can keep that constant for the forecast uh, period, right? And here you have different scenario base price, conservative, high price, low price, and worst price. And you can always select any scenario that you want. Then here, we have a gas pricing uh, as well. We follow the same format as uh, this model is well structure and consistent. Then you have your variable cost per barrel, so you can always put that right for your base case, your low case, and your high case. You also have your gas variable cost, oil variable cost, your fixed, your oil fixed cost, and our gas fixed cost. And you also have those different scenarios. Then one important part of it, um, considering the um, BF mark location, which is Nigeria, so we have some fiscal policy, uh, VRA, um, that is applied whenever you are in oil and gas. So we've also considered that in building this model, right? Uh, royalty on uh, production, royalty on oil production, right? Based on uh, the range that you have, royalty on gas, your tax of the day, uh, then other tax levy, your hydrocarbon tax, your company income tax, your tertiary tax, abandonment, uh, abandonment cost, right? Your CPR limit, cost recovery, saving rates. Then you have your investment tax uh, allowance and uh, other levy apply. So you also have some production allowance. We also consider our capital allowance as well. So please remember, uh, I'm not a tax expert, so which means this is subjected to updates and review. So if you want to work on this, um, please make sure you have knowledge of the uh, Nigerian PIA uh, tax, right? So that it's easy for you to understand what has been done and do any updates in case it need be for it. Then here we have our operating working capital and that's more like what we have in our input worksheet. So for the purpose of the justice template, uh, we've now considered edging and that was done intentionally uh, for now maybe the next version uh, we can consider factoring in our uh, edging into it. So that's on the part of input. So everything you need to do updating the model is input. We have the workings. So here we have our timing that we've created, uh, which kind of create that flexibility. The model is uh, built to cover a 10 year period and two year uh, construction period. So your construction period might be one year, three years, right? Your forecast period of 10 years or max of 12 years. So here we just have our timing and flag, which we've created. And here we have our assets calculation, where we have our capex and our capital allowance so here uh, we do the capex for each of the assets right and also the capital allowance as uh, required by the by the tax law for this right so here we have our funding as well so total capex needed uh, all the funds that we need for our project we've so created a summary down here your construction costs your fee interest during construction and the reserves are needed to fund your debt reserve account right and then the sources of funding so we build out the debt schedule the uh, annuity the fixed annuity debt schedule uh, the sculpted debt schedule as well so we can easily click on the scenario it automatically switch that all right then we have our equity schedule and our retain uh, earnings for the operation for the funds then on the operation working Right, that's where we have our revenue, our revenue, our variable cost, our fixed cost, and our operating working uh, capital. Here we have our fiscal, uh, the old tax computation. This is where we have it for our royalty, investment tax, allowance, our levies, right, our agricultural tax, and also our company, our company income tax. So I also added one uh, part to this, even though it's not linked to the model, but in case you just want to have that understanding, now uh, different tax assets and different tax liability. Uh, it's just a, a, a sample uh, calculation that we just built into the model. So this could serve as you know, be a, a learning curve for anyone that wants to understand how we do the calculation. Then here we have our outputs, so our income statements, well laid out, right, and the uh, necessary metrics needed to um, measure the. Uh, viability of the project, then the oil income 
eight minutes, right? So we are operating profit. The same thing for the gas income statement. So maybe we want to just evaluate the viability separately. We have that in the income statement and we have the consolidated uh, income statement. And here we have a cash flow statement as well. Well laid out, simplified your inflow, your outflow, and you have our net cash and necessary metrics needed under it. We also have added that inflow to revenue. Uh, inflow cash uh, that should be outflow to revenue inflow to revenue uh, inflow to outflow to revenue then we also have our net cash to uh, revenue as well so metrics needed then here we have our balance sheet which is currently balanced and here we have our analysis in evaluating the project so your free cash flow then this in valuing the uh, in valuing the assets right your reserve then you have your implied uh, EBIT to pay the reserve as well so we have to do a conversion uh, for the reserve so everything is uh, mmboe uh, equivalent right so and here we have a debt service uh, coverage ratio considering the project to be getting uh, debt so we have our debt uh, debt service coverage ratio interest coverage ratio uh, our EBITDA interest coverage ratio and also we have our debt sizing that we built into the model check if the project can actually take uh, up and accommodate the uh, debts needed right then we factor in our debt service reserve accounts to the model so please kindly please know that this model is uh, uh, can always update in the next version and in case you are going through this model and you need a clarification or you need a particular update that hey guy i need you to build this into this model and let me have it as my own personal template uh, definitely we can always work together you can always reach out to me and you can drop a chat all right and we can always uh, pick things up if you want to add some functionality into the model right you have created this as a template and as a, a learning point for anyone that wants to understand how we build uh, oil and gas um, mo uh, model especially for a project in that and you also, also want to have understanding of the uh, a PIA, um, the tax law for oil and gas, right, and how you apply them in our model. So, it's well, a well simplified model. And here we have a summary which kind of just give us the overview of everything, right? So, your model scenario, the valuation of the assets, the funding and the use of the fund, our debt reserve and our uh, debt service reserve accounts, and our debt profile as well. And here you can see uh, the funding right the financial performance from the uh, summary worksheet revenue variable cost the fixed cost EBITDA the profit for tax net profit cash flow available for debt service right your net cash flow your debt service debt service reserve account return on asset return on equity and the reserve uh, as well right um, the, the, the uh, how the plan to make use of your uh, reserve you can see that the reserve profile how uh, they use it as well right so that's more like what we have in the model and it's well simplified in case you do any updates uh, so because of the uh, interest during construction that has been built into the model and uh, the debt service reserve accounts we also factor in the macro so here yeah, once you are done with the model do, done with the any updates just click on run the model we just do the copy and paste and come back here and tell you that yes uh, this is the model is balanced and everything is working on perfect so this is just a sample template for an oil and gas project in our model.